24 and I feel like I should already know how the world works. And Fellas, welcome back. Today, we're diving into a powerful and controversial topic. Modern women learn the hard way as they realize feminism has betrayed them. We'll explore the disillusionment some women are facing, the tough lessons they're learning, and how this realization is reshaping perspectives on feminism. If you're ready for a deep dive into this complex issue, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. Let's get into it. Viral attention for sharing her regrets about ditching the idea of marriage and family. Now, her article in Business Insider reads, quote, I'm 38 and single, and I recently realized I want a child. I'm terrified that I've missed my opportunity. That woman's name is Melissa Persling, and she's revealing to Fox News Digital what she thinks caused her current situation. Listen. I feel unbelievably betrayed by feminism. I was constantly fed this idea that women can do everything. We don't really need men. Women can... Women can have the great career and, and have the kids that they like and change the tires and do this. I mean, I grew up thinking and men are great, but like I can do all the same things. I do feel in many ways betrayed by that line of thinking. I kind of want to go back to some of those, some of those teachers and coaches and, and say, what the hell did you mean by that? Because women can't do it all. I, we can't. This woman's admission that feminism is a scam is just the beginning of a much-needed wake-up call. For years, she was fed a lie. A lie that told her she could live a carefree, party lifestyle, pushing off responsibilities and deeper connections until she hit 40. She believed she could have it all. The fun, the freedom, the excitement, without any consequences. But now, as the years have caught up to her, reality is hitting her hard, and the truth is undeniable. She's come to the painful realization that she can't mingle with the younger crowd anymore, and those wild nights out aren't as appealing or easy as they once were. The vibrant social life she was promised has faded, and in its place is a sense of loneliness and isolation. This so-called feminist liberation that was supposed to free her has instead become a lifelong imprisonment of solitude. The independence she was told to prioritize has left her with no one to turn to, and now, she's learning the hard way that the promises of feminist ideology are not what they were cracked up to be. When they're young, they make so much noise, proudly declaring, I'm strong and independent, and I don't need anyone. They revel in the attention, the praise, and the freedom that comes with it. But as the years go by, and they find themselves alone with their choices, they begin to see how different things really are. The world isn't as forgiving, and the options aren't as plentiful as they once were. The attention fades, the parties get old, and the reality of aging in a world that values youth starts to set in. She's not alone in this realization, and unfortunately, many more will follow in her footsteps. They'll discover, just as she has, that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. What they thought was freedom was actually a path leading to emptiness. The security, the connection, and the support they took for granted are gone, and now they're left with nothing but regrets. But let's be clear, she has no one to blame but herself. She made these choices, bought into the lies, and ignored the warnings. She's the one who turned her back on traditional values, who scoffed at the idea of settling down, who prioritized fleeting pleasures over long-term fulfillment. And now, she's paying the price. The truth is, you never truly appreciate what you have until it's gone, and she's learning that lesson all too late. The blame lies squarely on her shoulders. She's the one who chose to believe the lies, who refused to see the reality staring her in the face. She had the chance to make different choices, to prioritize what really mattered, but she didn't. And now, she has to live with the consequences. The feminist dream she chased was nothing more than a mirage, and now that the illusion has shattered, she's left to pick up the pieces of a life built on false promises. This is the reality that so many will face if they continue down this path. The noise, the bravado, the insistence that they don't need anyone. All of it fades with time. And when it does, they'll find themselves in the same position. Alone, regretful, and with no one to blame but themselves. The truth is, 
Liberation isn't about rejecting everything that came before. It's about understanding what truly matters and making choices that align with that understanding. She missed that lesson, and now, she's learning it the hard way. Feminism has definitely ruined all of that, where it comes to men being men. Men step up. There was, I don't know if you guys saw that article, that there was uh, some girl that was drowning, and the guy saved her life, and then he was like, she was going to sue him for touching her. Oh, he, he touched me without my consent. Bitch, you were under the water, you were dying. Like, he literally saved your life. And she's like, well, for a brief moment, I was grateful that I was alive. This is why men don't step up, because when they do the right thing, Search they get crucified. Story. If you want better men, be better women, because it's... It starts with you, how you act, how you carry yourself, how you talk to them. Treat a man like a king, he'll treat you like a queen. She really nailed it. The truth is, these days, a man can do everything right, be respectful, kind, and considerate, and still lose out because a woman decided, on a whim, to make him suffer. Maybe we looked the wrong way, said something that was taken out of context, or simply existed in the wrong space at the wrong time. Suddenly, we're labeled a creep removed and ostracized, not because we did anything wrong, but because someone decided to weaponize a moment against us. This is exactly why men are stepping back, why we're no longer eager to help or engage with women in the same way. It's too risky in this environment. Modern-day feminism has become a scam, twisting itself into something toxic that's only made society worse. It's no longer about equality or empowerment. It's about control, power, and, sadly, misandry, hatred towards men. Feminism has morphed into something that encourages women to see men as the enemy, to view every interaction with suspicion, and to assume the worst in every situation. The result? Men are withdrawing, choosing not to engage, not because we're less capable or interested, but because we're protecting ourselves from being unjustly vilified. She's absolutely accurate about how feminism has already turned toxic, creating a divide between men and women that's becoming harder to bridge. What started as a movement for equality has spiraled into something that's damaging relationships, families, and society at large. Feminism was supposed to uplift women, but in its current form, it's doing the opposite. It's turning American women into second-class citizens in the eyes of the world, compared to women from other cultures who still value and appreciate traditional roles and relationships. The irony is clear. Feminism, which was supposed to empower, has instead twisted itself into a force that isolates and alienates. American women are losing out because they've bought into this toxic narrative, and now they're finding themselves in a worse position compared to women around the world who haven't been influenced by this distorted version of empowerment. I have kids, but I'm, I'm not a person that particularly likes to date people with kids mm -hmm. anyways, so um, <laughs> Why is it? I don't like to deal with drama. Yeah. It's a lot of guys that they don't want to date women with kids. Well, just say he's saying man, drama. Well, let, me, let me pick it up. <laughs> yeah, tell That's us, not tell a man. Tell the men that don't date women with kids, I understand where they're coming from. Because don't no man want to play Mr. Cleanup guy, right? Why not? What is it that you can offer me that you haven't given to another man? Oh, my goodness. That's the reason why I'm saying that. Because, one, you shared your youth, your fertility, and your womb with another man. So why should I give up my resources to take care of your kids? Are you serious right now? Yes, I'm being very serious. That's some bullshit. If you are a man that has children, mm -hmm. to say that to a woman mm -hmm. that has children, mm -hmm. it almost sounds as narcissistic as hell. Uh, okay, let me ask you this. How are your kids are going to be an asset to me if I was dating you? I would never date a man that ever asked me no craziness like that. Uh, see, I would never. Because you would problem. never ask me how my kids would be an asset to you. That's the thing. That's insanity. So do you want a man to come in there and share his resources with your kids? Yeah. What is the resources that he's sharing with my children? His finances. Because, I don't need them. Because Vic, Vic, that's cap. If a man is dating a woman at some point in time, Vic, a woman Let's is going to, to want a man to share his finances mm -hmm. in the household. It's ironic, isn't it? True narcissists don't even realize they are narcissists. The fact that she doesn't see how she's describing herself speaks volumes. She openly admits that she can't date a man with kids, but if a man says he can't date a woman with kids, suddenly, he's not a real man? The double standard is glaring, yet she seems completely blind to it. This is just another example of how the feminist movement has really screwed up our women. It's given them this inflated sense of self-importance, where they feel entitled to have everything on their terms, 
while shaming men for having their own preferences or boundaries. It's not about equality anymore. It's about control and self-obsession. She's walking around with way too much attitude, thinking she's above everyone else, but in reality, she's trapped in her own narcissistic mindset. Feminism was supposed to empower women, but in cases like hers, it's only fed into a toxic mentality that justifies hypocrisy and breeds arrogance. It's a shame because she's not alone. So many women have bought into this warped version of empowerment that leaves them isolated and unfulfilled, all the while pushing good men away. The very movement that was supposed to lift women up has instead filled them with an attitude that's doing more harm than good. The truth is, this attitude is unattractive, and it's pushing men further away. Men aren't going to stick around for someone who thinks the world revolves around them. Eventually, reality will hit, and when it does, the attitude won't be enough to mask the emptiness that comes with it. I am leaving my dating life to the universe. I'm only going to be dating someone if I meet them naturally. Not on dating apps because it is a joke at this stage. I met this guy on Tinder and we were organizing to go and have dinner. And we established at the start that I'm not after a one night stand. I'm not going to go to your house and sleep with you, whatever. I'm going to... Yeah, not interested in one night stand. That's just not for me. Um, anyway, so he's organizing dinner and he's like, well, how about we do dinner? And then he casually mentioned something about coming back to my house after dinner. So I then ignore the dinner comment, um, ignore the coming home comment. And I just said, yep, dinner sounds great. And then he messages me saying, so would I be able to stay at your house tonight? Mate, do you not have a home? Why would you want, why would I want you to come and sleep at my house? And I have never met you before. What is wrong with people? I understand you might go out and meet someone, have a few drinks with them, you vibe really well and you just go home together, but you don't preempt it. You don't say, let's go out for dinner and then I'm going to come back to yours. I've never met you in my life. Like, ew, is that not an ick for anyone? I've also had another guy offer to take me shooting as the first date. Like, in the bush, pig, sh pig hunting. As a first date, as in I've never met you in my life, I won't know where we're going and you're going to take me shooting? Yeah, that sounds so safe for me. Like, men, have a think. Have a little think about women's safety and how we're going to feel. If you're wanting a one-night stand, establish that straight away. And if that's been established, don't try and weasel your way into my bed. I just, oh my God, I just have no, I just can't fathom what some people think. And I'm leaving my dating now to the universe. And if I'm not meant to meet the love of my life naturally then I just, I'm meant to be by myself because it is like getting joke at this stage with some of these men. It's almost laughable when you think about it. These women are probably all dating the same guys, the top 10% of men who fit their narrow criteria. And then they have the nerve to get mad when things don't go their way. They chase after the same few men, ignoring the rest, and then act surprised when these guys don't stick around or treat them the way they expect. The reality is that they're competing with each other for the attention of a small group of men. And when those men don't give them the fairy tale they're hoping for, they lash out and blame everyone but themselves. They refuse to see the bigger picture, that by all chasing the same type of guy, they're setting themselves up for disappointment. It's no wonder they're frustrated, but that frustration is self-inflicted. These women are caught in a cycle of their own making. They overlook the majority of good men out there who could offer them stability, respect, and genuine connection, all because they're too focused on chasing after the same high-status guys who have all the options. And then, when these men don't prioritize them, they act like the world is unfair, as if they're the victims. It's time they take a step back and realize that their choices are the root of their problems. They're dating the same 10% of men and expecting different results. That's not going to happen. Until they broaden their horizons and start valuing men for more than just their status or looks, they're going to keep finding themselves in the same situation. Angry, disappointed, and alone. It's not the men who are the problem. It's their unrealistic expectations and the narrow criteria they've set. If they keep going after the same guys and expecting a different outcome, they're only going to end up more bitter and frustrated. The blame is on them for not seeing that the issue lies in their own choices and attitudes. Question for the men or single men, maybe men in general. 
Is it too aggressive if a girl just comes up to you, starts talking to you, asks for your number just right off the jump? Is that too aggressive? Would you rather her come over and be like, just wanted to let you know I'm going to appreciate a good looking man when I see him because... You know, I've seen many fish in this sea and there ain't many good looking ones. So just thought I'd let you know you're super cute and then have her, you know, circle back before she leaves. Maybe slide you her number and say, not sure if you're single, not sure if you're interested, but in the chance that you are single and you are interested, give me a call. Would love to grab a drink. Would love to grab dinner. Would love to get to know you. Text me ask me out. Is that too aggressive or are guys appreciating that kind of stuff? I feel like that's the route I would go, but just super curious. I think most men would appreciate it if a woman like her made a move, but let's be real. What are the odds, especially for a woman as pretty as she is? Now, don't get it twisted. That's not aggression. It's confidence. And honestly, we do appreciate it when a woman shoots her shot. It shows she's willing to put herself out there, and that's something men respect. But here's the catch. Women like her usually start asking this kind of question when their expiration date is near, when they're starting to realize that they've wasted their prime years chasing after the wrong guys. They come to their senses when they're older and suddenly see the value in the men they overlooked when they were younger. But by then, it's often too late, and the options they once had aren't there anymore. It's a farce, really. She's not talking about approaching the average guy, the 90% of men who are genuinely good, hardworking, and decent. No, she's talking about going after the Tom Brady's and Brad Pitt's of the world, the top dogs who have their pick of women and aren't exactly hurting for attention. She's still locked into that mindset, thinking she can get the elite guys without realizing that they've already moved on or are only interested in something casual. So... Yeah, this is a stupid question, and only simps are going to say, sure, go for it. They're the ones who will encourage her to keep chasing that fantasy, instead of facing the reality that her best shot was years ago with the men she overlooked. The truth is, most men would appreciate a genuine, down-to-earth woman who knows what she wants and isn't playing games. But that's not what she's offering. She's still playing in a league where the odds aren't in her favor anymore, and deep down, she knows it. It's not about confidence. It's about clinging to an outdated idea of what she deserves, while ignoring the fact that time has changed the game. 